Like I've always said, I'm not a fan of Monday mornings. Welcome on the show, Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Something broke on the internet this morning. Something really broke. Let me explain to you what broke first. And then you can understand where I'm coming from. Now, former Super Eagles goalkeeper, of course, his name is Dosu Joseph, has branded the past and present foreign coaches of the senior national teams as mechanics. Ha. In the last two decades, the Nigeria Football Federation has appointed eight foreign coaches. Clemens Vesterhoff, Johannes Bonfrey, Philip Trouze, Bora Milutinovic, Six Librecht, Bertie Vox, Lars Lagerbeck, and Gernot Rohr to lead the team. Now, only Vesterhoff led the team to an African Cup of Nations title in 1994, while Bonfrey and Raw guided the team to a second and third place finish at the tournament. Now, former Super Eagles goalkeeper Dosu Joseph has branded the past and present foreign coaches of the senior national teams as mechanics. Wow. Now, let me surprise you guys on the show. I've got Dosu Joseph on the show. Dosu Joseph, good morning, sir. My brother. <laughs> good morning, sir. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm very well. You brand them mechanics. Ha! Ah, mechanics care. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway, anyway, I, I said so. I didn't say it maybe for same sake. I think I, I said it because I played under a few of the uh, uh, foreign coaches in the national team. I okay. played under Bumfrey Joe and I played under Philip Trouze. Mm. I watched uh, West Ham coach the national team, and I saw what he did for the national team before he left. He qualified the Super Eagles to the World Cup, won the Nations Cup before he left, and uh, make uh, the Nigerian national team the best fourth in the world. And when he left, Bonfred Joe uh, came in, and he won the Nations Cup. We saw what Philip Troze did before he left. And since then, I think the national team has been struggling with uh, foreign coaches. We have great players to deliver the Nations Cup to this lovely country, but it has never been. We've seen what late Keshi did. Under two years, he won the Nations Cup. We've seen what late Shuaibu did for this great country. But every time all these foreign coaches comes around, it's all taught the, 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 the bronze meant like gold. That is what we hear all the time. I think we need our people to come back and handle our national team. I think enough is enough. I wish him all the best, but then I believe our home-based coaches can do better. But since then, I think he's been struggling and struggling and struggling. Now, Dosu Joseph, yes, no. let me ask you a personal question. Most of these foreign coaches don't look towards our Nigerian Professional Football League. And we have talents there. I, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with that. Yes. Uh, West Ham have played with the home base players. And we know what the results are. The same thing with Bonfred Joe. The same thing with all the home base coaches. Keshi won the Nations Cup with most of the home base players. But since then, I think the foreign coaches decided to say 100%. If you're not playing outside Nigerian shoes, you can't be in the national team. And that has put our national team in a tight situation. All we ask for is to see our national team up there, win Lawrence, and claim as we have African giants. But since we've not won anything, I think we can't say yes, we are African giants. I think he, he brought tears to my eyes as in Nigeria. And for what we have done for this country, we want to see our Super Eagles up there. If Super Eagles is playing tomorrow, I remember what happened years back. The whole street or road is empty. People want to go home and watch the national team. But what happens now, I think it's all that way around. Nobody wants to watch the national team play. 
It paints us, the earth, and also Nigerians. But then what can we do? We keep on fighting and talking. At the end, we hope they will listen. It is our country. Doesn't belong to the Ingos. Let me ask you Let's a question. Drink out our people. Just, yes, let me, just, just let me ask you a question now. When you guys were playing football for Nigeria, it was more about the passion, not the money. But now it's about the money now. What kept you guys say, going then? I won't say it's the money for the young generations now. It is also the passion. Mm. They've been taught to represent, and they come home to wear the green, white, green. Who handles them is what is important. What pattern of play they want to play is what is important. But bringing 100%, 100% of those foreign-based players, I think, who were playing African Nations Cup, not the World Cup. So let the own base players be part of them. We have good players that play in, in, in the NPSR. We've been calling on this for ages. And thank God, I think the league is on. We're all waiting for his team list to be released. Let's see how many of the Aimba, the Canopillas, the Rivers United players. And likewise, every other MPSR team players, let's see which of them will be there. So now finally, Mr. Joseph, before I let you go on the show today, what do you think the solution to this problem is? Our technical, is it the technical abilities? Is it the coaches we're bringing in? Do you think we should have Nigerian coaches? What's the final solution to this problem? I think the final solution is to give everybody equal rights. Not just bringing 100 percent euro based players to the national team. The national team belongs to home base and forest. Mm. No matter where you play, let us enjoy the 50, 50 percent or 30, 30, whatever percent you want to give. We've got great players in this country playing at the MPSL. Give them the opportunity, not just the hero plays all the time. We've seen what the home base coaches did. That is what we're saying. The home base coaches played with the home base players, few foreign base players, and they won laurels for this country. Not just going for tournament, come up with thought that with the bronze and we say yes, it smell like gold. No. Opportunities should be given to everybody who knows how to play. Not just selecting few ones and say yes, this is what you can lay on your hands on. No. We want to see our national team up there and be happy. Football, football brings us together. We're happy when we see the, those boys play for the national team. Thank you very much. The legendary Dosu Joseph, former goalkeeper, welcome, Super Eagles. You. And I hope that when we call you again, you will please come on the show, sir. You are free, my brother. Thank you very much. Now, that was the legendary Dosu Joseph, ex Super Eagles goalkeeper on the show. And he's promised to come back again. But something happened over the weekend. And everybody, I'm sure everybody who bets, I don't bet. I don't know why I don't bet. It's not my luck. But people who bet, I'm sure everybody bets, they, they had their bets against Manchester United. Not Man City. It was Man City everybody bet for. They will win. They will beat Man United. And Man United allowed Man City to hold possession for 90 minutes. And they caught them on the counter twice. And they win. They, they won the game 2-0. Wow. Caught them on the counter twice. And they won the game. First goal, three minutes. Now, Manchester City, their 20-match winning streak was ended by rivals Manchester United as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side enjoyed a 2-0 Premier League derby victory at the Etihad Stadium on Sunday. Now, United won thanks to an early penalty from Bruno Fernandes and a second-half strike from Luke Shaw, man of the match, if you ask me, with the result narrowing City's lead at the top of the table to 11 points. Well, over United with 10 games remaining. It was City's first defeat in all competitions since November 21st. Now, Pep Guardiola's side may prove to be unmatchable in the title race, but United will take a real belief for next season from a deserved victory. Sokja is starting to become something of a nemesis for Guardiola. This was the Norwegian's fourth debut victory since he took over at Old Trafford in December 2018. Now, City were stunned after 34 seconds when referee Anthony Taylor 
pointed to the penalty spot after Gabriel Jesus had brought down Anthony Martial just inside the box. <laughs> you know, football, uh, every game lives its own life. This season, it's, uh, it's unpredictable. It can go up and down. That's just human nature. Today, I thought, we've, of course, we started really brightly on the front foot. Uh, when you get that 1-0 lead, it's, it, create, it sets a tone for the game. So, of course, it does. Um, and I thought we were excellent the first 10-15. Then we settled into our shape because probably played more too much on the result. Um, and we ju adjusted at the half time to be more positive again. And the second goal was uh, incredible. So we're going to do everything we can to keep the performance levels up every day, of course. None of these boys can look beyond Thursday. All we have to think about is Thursday, every game, one game at a time and see where we're at. Um, we want to improve. I want the players to improve. We want to learn from this experience. We want to learn from Wednesday's experience against Palace. We, we need to improve on so many things to get up to, um, to, uh, to get our consistency better. Of course, there are 11 points ahead of us. If, I, if I'm not wrong, 10 games to go. So that's a long, long way. So we need for ourselves and just be a better Man United. And I feel we're a better Man United now than we were 12, 13, 16 months ago. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Man United, um, for the victory. Uh, yeah, we yeah we conceded the first goal that uh, against that teams that they are so strong, so it's more difficult. But uh, after the first goal, five ten minutes, uh, we were a little bit out. But when after that we we regain, we came back to the to the game and uh, yeah. We we play, for example, much better than the the day we was ham when didn't deserve maybe two or three points. And today I think we played for more, but uh, the result is the result. Zero two. Congratulations. Next one. We have done incredible today. The news is uh, we lost, and uh, congratulations, Man United, uh, for this victory. Um, but here is try to win the Premier League. And the Premier League, we need six victories, six, seven victories to, to, to win because we are in 10 games. And when you have arrived in less 10 games, everything is going to be shorter. Um, our opponents, they have to win all the games and we have to uh, to lose four or five in the case when we win. So a part of this, what we have to do is recover tomorrow, I will not speak with the team. Day after tomorrow, I will not speak of the team. And the day of the game, I will tell the team how incredible they are. Because the way we lost today, um, the way we played until the end, proving right, left, left, considering a team is fantastic. So one year, no one defeat away, it means how strong they are. And uh, having that margin now is, uh, is in our hands. So, and now is... Uh, Come back, uh, what you have to do, new fresh legs next uh, Wednesday and try to, to, to do another, another game. All things been equal. I'm supposed to have Emmanuel Hohiri on Zoom call this morning. And I'm supposed to have Ade Goki, Ade Niro, on the show today. Now, let me explain to you what I'm trying to do. Emmanuel Hohiri is a Manchester City fan. In fact, he's a member of the, well, he's a top guy in Manchester City fans in Lagos. Adeno Adegoke is a big Manchester United fan and is a member of the executive committee of Manchester United fans in Lagos too. Nero, good morning. Good morning. What is God? You guys didn't care about um, Manchester City's possession yesterday. You got them on the counter twice and you scored twice. Yeah, it was a tactic by the coach. We are going to meet Manchester City, one of the best in the Euro presently. They may find an all cylinders and they be glad. So the only thing the coach will have done is just to be fixed while trying to go on the counter and it worked very well. The result is just there and the Man United won again, 2 0. And that's the third time the Liguna Social will be defeating Pep Guardiola. The straight three seasons away from home. 
And I think it's just a statement. But now the two ladies from Manchester United, I'm talking about the winning the title, but it gives them a good confidence in order to cement their top four. Manchester City have not lost in a long while. And they always lose to Manchester United. What do you think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does right? Our Man City fan will still join us very soon on Zoom. But what do you think he's doing right? I think it's a derby. A derby is another form of another competition. It goes beyond uh, opponents. Everybody wants to win a derby. You don't want to lose because of bragging rights. I think both of them, they've met 185 times. Manchester United have won them seven times. City won 55, and the remaining others in a draw. Okay, so Nino. It's the bragging rights. Nino, please slow down for me. I've got Emmanuel Hoyiri, who is a top dog as far as Man City fans are concerned in Lagos. Emmanuel, good morning. Good morning, bro. Uh, I wish I could hear you well. You, you have to speak a little louder, please, Emmanuel. Good morning, Wally. Okay, you were sounding like a loser initially, you know. <laughs> okay, now, Nero just said that um, it's, it's, it's about bra bragging rights now. It's about elbow room at this point. It was Man United against Man City, the Manchester Derby, and they had to win. Do you agree with Nero on this one? Um, I, don't, I don't agree with him. I don't agree with him. It was a bad day in the office. Uh, the, boys, the boys have all the credit. They have had a very long run. 21 games winning run. It's unbeaten. Um, it was an emotional day. I feel like um, the boys were not just able to pull the trigger at the times they were in the box. And I feel that um, because of all the emotions Derby, um, we weren't just able to um, turn up at that moment. So Now, I now Emmanuel, I noticed something in that match. I, I hope you watched it too. Um, man, you didn't care about the possession that you guys had. They didn't care. It was about coming on the counter, they countered twice and they scored twice, and they almost did it again. What went wrong with the defense? Um, I was always been a boogie team. Um, Pep Guardiola's attitude has always been the counter attack. Everyone in the small teams sometimes um, they stop their trigger throughout the season with the introduction of Ruben Diaz and Stones form. Well, for the last minute, the mistake by Gabriel Jesus. You know, and it cost us that early penalty. Uh, push up, push up, and then we considered again with the count. So, um, it's unfortunate, um, but I um, turned out to be at this point. Uh, but we, we hope that going forward, especially in the Champions League. Now, um, let, me, let me go to Nero now. Nero. Um, Emmanuel says yeah. that Manchester United is a boogie team and that Gabriel Jesus made a mistake. Would you call us a mistake? Uh, so you have no excuse. When they were winning, there was no excuse for all those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when Manchester United defeated the 2-0, they were coming with all these kind of... Uh, they were in attacking, <laughs> talking about attacking. You lost yesterday. And uh, you lost last year. You lost two seasons ago. So it has been uh, it's a derby. So everybody's coming to the uh, the game. I think this this might not be the last game, but we have to win. And how you did that yesterday? They, it was done perfectly. They showed their they showed their best fight. You know they've been frustrated with an ambitious goalless draw against Chelsea and Crystal Palace, and they were losing further points to Manchester City. It was a statement yesterday. Though the book is just Manchester City to win. But at the end of the day, when I saw the uh, team list, I just in my end, uh, it did my end up in draw. But the first counter on that, it gave us the penalty. And it's the same thing happened in the second half. There are two way Manchester people have come back on that game. Now, um, so Iman it was the tactic and it worked. Yeah, Sometimes Iman it will not work. But when it comes to Derby, Manchester United is going to Manchester okay, okay. that we've been there before you. Nino, you know, slow down. Emmanuel, say something. Emmanuel, what did you say? What did you say, Emmanuel? I, I, I don't agree with you, Nero. I, okay. I think that even yesterday's game was not our hardest game. A game against West Ham, we struggled really hard, but we came through with the points at the end. 
But what happened yesterday was Gabriel Jesus lost his head. Even when he had the chances in the box, he couldn't just pull the trigger. Even Ilkay Gundogan lost his head. Kevin De Bruyne was making sloppy passes. Um, even until Walker came, our right side of the wing was not secured. Cancelo has been one of our best players. Nero, but he had his Nero, is, yesterday. Sorry, so Manuel. Nero, is, this um, a, is this a case of Emmanuel yeah. blaming, um, a bad worker blaming his tools? Is that what Emmanuel is doing right now? I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not blaming my tools. I'm not blaming my tools. <laughs> I feel like it was a bad day in the office. It's a bad day in the office. You know, you know Kevin De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne, fantastic player. Ike Gundogan, fantastic players. What's Emmanuel saying? Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, the good player, fantastic. But yesterday, I think it was shot by my uh, Tominen. Every Gadina came with a game plan, but at the end of the day, City finally first shot of their own uh, tactics. It didn't work. If the game had extended to 120 minutes, the same thing would have happened. Man, you could have scored the third goal. When a game like this was planned, and then another thing happened. You just have to get that. The players got themselves, and they get uh, Gardena played uh, on the Gunasoja and coordinated Manchester United for coming with that point. And uh, at least when something like this happened, just allow that way. It has happened, and then a better team won. I think the uh, city has still uh, the. They are still in the prime to win the league, but they should be careful. He said something about their game against West Ham. They didn't play very well. They could have lost that point in that place. But I think with their momentum, they will win the league. But playing against Manchester United, they always, they, it's another game entirely. It's, it's like a walk off final. Any, Ima, anything can win. Imano, but yesterday, Manchester United did their say, job. You can't say Imano, always. Imano, Imano, you can't say always. Go. We knocked you out of the Carabao Cup. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we knocked you out of Emmanuel, the Emmanuel, in a summary, Emmanuel, in a summary, would you agree with Nero and say the better team won yesterday? I'm only asking, though. I'm only asking. I wouldn't say the better team won. I wouldn't say the better team won. I would say we did not give 100% of the day and we lost to a tactics that has been a weak point over the years. So, I feel like the boys could have set up better. Pep Guardiola could have set up better to block um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But a few moments of weakness, the counter and Gabriel Jesus giving the penalty, that's where we lost it. Other than that, we had 20, we have over 20 plus attempts on target. Um, attempt, we created chances, we just couldn't pull the trigger. So I wouldn't say the better team won. We overwhelmed Man U, but they were just clinical at the end. So, um, I give it to Manchester United this time. We go for the league and the Champions League. Um, Nero, Emmanuel says the better team didn't win. In fact, he believes the better team lost, as far as he's concerned. Okay. For what he just said now, he said he gave it to, he, he said he gave it to Manchester United. So, the worst team, he has given it to the worst team. Well, he, he said the better team and lost. he said the game didn't go well, the way it was planned. In football, is either you win or you lose. Man, you have had more protection in recent games. They have played uh, Kita Palace. They played well against Chelsea. They did well against West Brom. They played well against Sheffield United. All this one did not give them points. What would you say? A better team is also with, with 2-0. That Kita United will have been the worst team that day. If it is 1-0 now, it will have been enough. The goal was scored early in first half and second half. Then the other team, they have every opportunity to equalize between that 90 minutes. Not Emmanuel, enough. say something. In you football, have to, you have to, you have to say something. I don't, Emmanuel, I, you have to say I something. Don't, I don't agree with Nero. I don't agree with Nero. United is not good enough to break a low block. So they could not win against Crystal Palace. They could not win against their previous opponent because they defended deep and they did not give them the space to run in behind the defense. But United is structured in a way that is designed against Manchester United, Manchester City's tactics. So on that day, rather than us defending in as a unit, this was something that we haven't seen in the last 22 games we have played. We have always blocked them with the high press. But this time, the mid um, I don't know, they had a bad game. And then they had the chances. So Nero cannot use those examples as, as it was a one-off. 
And the boys are allowed, they are not machines. They are allowed to be humans. So they made the mistake and they paid the price. And we hope they learn from it. Come on, sit. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Hoyuri, for coming on the show this morning. Thank you very much. And uh, Nero, of course, um, Emmanuel, Emmanuel has said, Nero, that um, he, the boys made, made their mistakes and they paid for it. It happens in football. You make mistakes, you pay for it. One is God. I can hear you. I can hear you. In football, generally, it might be your day, it might not be your day. True. Guardiola has congratulated Manchester United. That's the quote of Manchester City. So if Emmanuel will be telling me that uh, another thing, else, then he need to call Guardiola. That who was the better team? On the Kunakuta, I also congratulated uh, the Matiti for good performance. Mm. In football, there will be a winner, there will be a loser. Yesterday, Manchester United started to work well. And on paper, they were the better team. If you are going for statistics, go for all these corners, this all dribble, dribble, possession. Now you have done that. They did not gain a point. If you can win a game, you are the better side. That is football. If you want to tell another story, start writing as a journalist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nero. Adigo okay for coming to the show this morning. Thank you very much. Now, I had Emmanuel O'Hiri on the show this morning. Manchester City, big fan. They have a club in Lagos. And, of course, he's one of the executives. Now, Manchester United, too, have a club in Lagos, fan club in Lagos. And Nero is a top executive, too. So I had two of them going up against each other. Mm. Liverpool's incredible slide continued with the sixth successive Premier League home defeat as Fulham secured a crucial win to give their survival hopes a huge boost. Now, Mario Lenina's goal in the stroke of halftime after the Gabon midfielder had dispossessed Mo Salah gave the visitors a vi deserved win and saw them draw level on 26 points with the 17th placed Brighton. It was Fulham's first win at Anfield since 2012, while champions Liverpool are now struggling to finish in the top four after another uninspired performance at home. The Reds, who won the title last season by 18 points, had gone 68 home league matches unbeaten before their current run started with a loss to Burnley in January. Since then, they have also lost to Brighton, Manchester City, Everton, Chelsea, and now Fulham. Now, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp made seven changes following the defeat to Chelsea in an attempt to freshen things up. But Fulham were the better side and carved, carved, carved out four chances in the opening half and in an hour alone. Wow. Okay, that's all. We can take on the show today on a Monday morning. Like I always say, I'm not a fan of Monday mornings, really. It's been Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. And like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. Mm -hmm.